OK, seems we are up running and live. A very good evening to you. Phil Pendlebury here and I hope you're having a super mega large day. And for visitors from the Middle East, of course, Salam Alaikum, Mahaba. Good to have you with us too. So here we are on another stream about ARA with WaveLab 12. This is part two, uh, the previous one we did last month. And I've got a few things to add on to that. Um, a brief recap over how ARA works, but not in such fine detail as we did last month, otherwise we'll be here for two hours. Um, and a few corrections or additions to the items that we covered last month as well. Uh, so basically, I'm hoping to kind of finish the entire ARA processes with this video. So showing you pretty much everything that can be done uh, with WaveLab 12 uh, within the ARA process. So I've got a project set up and I think we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, I've also got a couple of questions which we'll try and get to towards the end as well. Quick look at my notes. All right, so before we move on, might as well just do this again. Um, ARA stands for Audio Random Access. And what is it? It's like a plug-in on steroids. It's a way of bringing in another application to your DAW application. So in this case, we're using Nuendo, and in WaveLab, we'll be bringing WaveLab in as the ARA process. Uh, you can also use other applications. There's Spectra Layers from Steinberg as well that comes in as a very seamless ARA process, and some others that you may be aware of too. So, you, you know, the thing is, our uh, functionality depends on the DAW, uh, but with Cubase and Uendo, our works pretty seamlessly. So, let's move into it. Um, hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining us. Of course, I've got my friend Terry here who's moderating the chat. So, if you do have any questions or anything like that, um, feel free, shout them out, put them down in the chat and he will try to pass them over to me and we'll do our best between us to send answers back to you live. If it's something that we can't answer there and then on the spot, then of course, put them in the comments or I'll be taking note of the chat as well and uh, we'll answer them later on. All right, let's move into it. So here's uh, Nuendo. And we've got um, a project set up that has a number of different things in it. It's not really a working project, it's more of a demo project. Um, it has a number of working things so that we can demo what we're gonna do today. So first thing, brief recap, let's do this. In the past video, we kind of went into pretty fine detail about this, but I'm not gonna do that this time, as I just mentioned. But let's just quickly show you how our uh, works or how our processes work. I think, why not? Because I haven't got my headphones on. So we'll get the headphones on. Ah, the wonders of live streaming. Let's see if I can hear now. Hello, can yeah. I help you? Hmm, no problem. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. Okay, it doesn't matter what the audio is in this particular case, but um, at least I can actually hear, hear it. Helps. Okay, camera off. So let's say we're looking at that voice track. Now, normally with a plugin, as you know, you would bring up your mixer and you do an insert of a plugin. So Arrow works a little bit differently to that. And there's a number of ways to get ARA or get an ARA process onto your event. So this is the event here. Uh, if we select the track, first of all, we can actually use the entire track and put an ARA extension onto it. We're not gonna do that today. And we can also use the top menu. So we'll go up to the menu. And if I do my Alt, and we'll go to project, sorry, we'll go to audio and extensions. So let's just do that one more time, just to make sure that the uh, menu zoomed in there. So up to the top, audio, extensions, and that's where you'll choose your ARA process. The other way is to use, and this is what we're gonna be doing today mostly, you'll see this, the secondary click 
menu. So if I zoom in just a little bit, and you should be able to see that if I pull down this a little bit, let's make sure it's clear on the screen. There we go. So you can see this orange part here. And if I use my secondary click menu like that, you'll see we've got all these options and one of them is extensions and there we can choose Wave Lab Ara. Okay, so there's Wave Lab Ara and it is hopefully visible to you on the screen just so that you can see once more, we'll just zoom out quickly. So I've got it up in um, a center window here. Uh, you can actually put it down into the lower zone. We covered that last time. Um, but in this case, as I said, I'm going to stick to the center and then I can easily zoom in, uh, enabling you to see what's going on. So we've got our WaveLab ARA version. The process goes like this. You can do whatever you want to do within WaveLab um, of all the different features, which the rest of them we're going to show you today. And when you're done, we can close it. We can bring it back again like that. And then we use our secondary click menu again, go to extensions and we can go to make extension permanent, which will kind of burn in what we've done. Or we can remove this extension from the selected events. So that's the basics. Um, but if you want a more detailed explanation of how this all works, uh, please just refer back to the video from last month. Uh, like I said, we don't have time really to go into the, all that again. Um, even though there's probably some new people watching today, you know, it's still, you can just refer back to the other one and that'll give you all the fine detail of all the different ways to get our work in and what to do with it. So today we're going to just concentrate on the final few features that I missed from the last video. So I've got three items that um, uh, Philippe, the developer of WaveLab, uh, sent over to me uh, that he said would be a good idea to add in um, just to show a little bit more detail of what I was talking about last time. Um, so we'll do that first. So let's add the process again to the same file. Like I said, it doesn't matter which file we're using, but we'll add the process. So there's WaveLab, bring it up. And the first thing that uh, Felipe asked me to mention is about the transport control. So I was saying in the last video that one of the nice features of um, the ARA process thing is that you can basically use the you know key commands or whatever from your own transport within you can see what's going on in So I'm using, for instance, spacebar here. Uh, I can go back to the beginning of the project. I can do various things. And if I select a loop, um, the loop also appears innuendo itself, which is quite useful. But um, there are some things that make it a little bit more advanced when you're using the internal transport controls within WaveLab itself. <laughs> So a good example of that would be the uh, pre-roll and post-roll. So let's have a look at pre-roll, for example. So if we turn pre-roll on, you can see, hopefully, that let me, maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more there. You can see that there's a little um, shaded line that's appeared. And that means that when we press play, lots of voices today. Let's have a look you'll and get see the what's... normal playback. So you can see the cursor there with the pre-roll, but if we play we're recording using one of the anchor buttons. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look. So for instance, this one will play using the pre-roll and then stop on here. And this one will play using the pre-roll and then continue on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's uh, and the same thing applies to post roll as well. So you can see again on the cursor there, there's a post roll. If we hit them both, you can see we've got gray. And here we go. 
We're recording lots of voices. We're recording lots of voices. You get the idea. So those things are actually things that you can't really do using the uh, transport within Nuendo itself. You have to do it within WaveLab. Um, the other thing, if I can find it, yeah, here we are. So if we right click on here, so I'm going to zoom back out. Using post and pre-roll, if we right click, you can now see, I think, the top end. Yep, I'll zoom in there. Uh, we have a menu that allows you to select pre-roll, use play audio range, blah, 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 uh, short, medium, or long. And we can edit the short, medium, and long times as well. So let's just one more time, let's make it a long pre-roll, which is 10 seconds. And if we put the cursor over here, and zoom back in. You should be able to see clearly now that there's a ten, exactly a 10 second pre-roll there. And if we use the button play from Anchor. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're recording lots of voices today. Let's have a look and see what's going on in Studio One. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. And of course, right click again. You can't see that, but I'm right clicking. I'm going to change it to medium. And now we have the medium pre roll. Come on in and I'll show you some of the things going on here. We're OK, so that's uh, that's enough of that. And we'll move on to the next point. So we'll just uh, disable the pre roll because I don't want to get confused. So the next thing was uh, Philippe explained a little bit more about the way the loudness RMS overlay button works, which is this uh, bottom scroll wheel here. So if we enable that, you can see that we're getting an overlay. And actually, if I go over here and do zoom to peaks, which is a lovely feature, you can see that we've got this overlay that gets more intense the more that I turn the wheel over. And basically, the greater the difference from the peaks, the more dynamics are present in that region. So for instance, if you look at, this is a voice, so it's actually, there's quite a lot of differences in the peaks. But you'll find with music sometimes that when you look at that, that there won't be quite so much difference between the actual waveform and the RMS overlay. And it's handy to see that because it does give you an idea of dynamics. So that's that one. And finally, we need to go over to the loop tweaker. So we'll turn off the... Uh, RMS overlay first, and then we're going to go to process. Sorry, we're going to go to, yeah, we're going to go to process, and you'll see the tweaker and tone uniformizer <laughs> are both grayed out. And the reason for that is because we need to have markers. We need to have an actual loop region defined before we can use those tools. So let's just quickly select a little piece here we'll play that yeah we're recording hello can i help you hmm no problem come on in and i'll show you some of the things going on here come on in and i'll show you some of the things going on here show you some of the things going on here some of the things going on here going on here going on here going on all here. right so we've got our little loop area and now what we'll do is we'll just create a loop from the selection actually we could yeah, let's just do it like that. And you can see now, if I zoom in, we've got a set of loop markers there. Again, I'll play. Here. Going on here. Going on here. Going on. Don't worry, we're not going to play that too long. And now we go over to process, and you'll see that the tweaker and the tone uniformizer have now become ungrayed out. So if we click the tweaker, this is a clever little dialogue. Not really ideal for what um, I've got set up here, but it's, it's neat. It enables you to kind of trim and change the beginning and end of loops uh, visually. So you can see here, look, if I move this down, you can see 
that if we wanted to say line up a point where things were you know really nicely balanced let's say you had a sine wave or something like that and you were getting a click you can move the actual waveform the, the actual start and end point of the loop until they line up perfectly there's lots of settings on there we can then apply it and now it's changed the loop for us uh, like i said i'm not really i'm not really set up for for putting that into practical use today but you can see the power there um hopefully uh, let's just zoom in a little bit more on that one So you can see that it's showing us the waveform in fine detail. We also have crossfade and post crossfade there as well. There isn't any at the moment. So those were the things that I kind of missed um, from last time. Or not so much missed, but more a case of um, what we thought I should point out. All right. So let's move in to um, the, the first thing that I want to cover properly uh, for this stream. And these are all gonna be quite simple today, so we should be able to move through quite quickly. So we'll stay in ARA mode. It doesn't matter about all the markers and the loops and all that stuff for this one. And the, the first one I want to look at is in the view area, and it is the snapshots. Let's just put this all back to so that we've got the entire file filling the screen. And I'm going to take a snapshot of that. So what do we do? We hit the camera icon and we press the one button and that's now stored. There are some options so we can use the scroll position and zoom, the cursor position and the audio selection. So let's put all of those into action. Uh, for another snapshot. So I'm going to zoom in. Uh, let's, yeah, let's zoom into that. We'll select all of that part there and we'll put the cursor in the middle. We can play that. Someone's reading the news. Ah, looks like someone's reading the news. All right. So let's say we're working on, you know, quite a detailed part there, but then we need to switch backwards and forwards between the entire file. So I'm going to take a snapshot of that. Okay, so we've done our work. And then, ah, but I just want to see how the overall file looks. Now, instead of having to fiddle about with the zoom controls and the selection controls and so on and so forth, we can just press the first snapshot and as if by magic, we're back to where we were. And then, okay, we've had a quick look. We uh, have a rough idea of what we were doing. We can now press the snapshot button again, and everything comes back to how we left it. Which is, you know, it seems like a simple little feature, but actually extremely useful. And let's go one more time. Let's make one more. We'll, we'll zoom in massively there and we'll go to this particular little point, select that, we'll make that snapshot number three. And now, as you can see, whole file, selection number two, or selection number one, and then there's our super fine detail snapshot. And we can go back to the beginning again. So, my little tip on this one, which I should have really mentioned last time, is when you bring up your initial file, so let's close this down, and we'll just remove it. So I'm doing a remove extension, and then I'm going to add WaveLab ARA. And you'll see that when it opens, WaveLab displays the entire waveform in a nice, clear way. You can turn on the automatic zoom um, thing. We mentioned this last time, it changes the uh, ruler over here to zoom to the peaks. So I like to have that on. There's a little green dot as well there that shows you that that's on. But my, my little tip here would be, once you've initially loaded, if you feel you're gonna be doing a little bit of work on this rather than just 
something very quickly. It's always an idea to just do a quick snapshot and store it in position number one. And that way you can always get back to that particular area. Uh, we can also store as global presets. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. It kind of makes sense. Global would be for everything and not global would be for only this particular piece of media. Right. Time to move on. So there's snapshots. One more time. Zoom in. Put the cursor wherever we want. Select that part. Snapshot number two. And then we go back to one and we've got everything back how it was. Great. All right, so I think we'll remove that and we will move on. Uh, remove extension from selected events. And that concludes snapshots. Very powerful, simple, but useful. Uh, so I want to move on to something else that I skipped over uh, last month, which was mid-side editing. And mid-side editing... The actual ins and outs of it really could use an entire video and there's plenty of good ones around that go into kind of fine detail about how mid-side works, what it is, where it comes from. But the basics of it are that rather than using a left uh, channel and a right channel and you can control the levels of the left and right, you've got the centre and what's surrounding and you can control them separately. And we can do that in Wavelab. Like I said, that's a brief description. I know that that is not perfect. Um, there's much more to it than that, but that's not what this video is about. All right, let's move on. So I've got, uh, let's see, where is it? I've got some music here. I thought I'd get some music ready for this one just to you know, make it a little bit more interesting. So let's have a quick listen. So we didn't actually need to listen to that, but I just thought it breaks things up a bit if we've got a bit of music playing. Uh, it's a track that I'm working on, so that's how I'm able to play it now. Once that gets released, of course, that's when the problems start for me because then it'll get muted on this video. But anyway, not to worry about that. So we've got music. Let's have a look at how we can treat that using Wave Labara. So we're going to bring it up. We're going to go to Extensions, Wavelab, Ara. And there we have my little music clip. And let's zoom back in. <laughs> so, pretty obvious. You can see quite clearly here that we've got the left channel and the right channel. Okay, and there's various things that we could do here, but let's just take as an example, um, you know, we could just delete that part there and lo and behold, what happens? Yep, everything goes very, very wrong. Uh, but let's do something a little bit more practical. Let's say we just wanted to work on, let's put an envelope there on the left channel and listen to what happens. So you can see, uh, and you can hear, obviously, hopefully, uh, that the left channel faded out and faded back in again, the right channel stayed as it was. So that's kind of the standard editing. And, you know, whether you'd have a use to do it or not is one thing. The other thing is that what I'm showing you here is a very simple process of just, we're just going to play with levels because it comes across quite easily over the uh, YouTube thing. 
So let's put that back to normal. And now what we're going to do is going to move into mid side mode. So how do we do that? In WaveLab, it's quite simple. If you look where my mouse is, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to try my best to zoom right in so that you can see. We have a little control down at the bottom here. Um, and we simply click that. And now it becomes M and S as opposed to L, R. And you can see the actual waveform display um, changing. All right, so you can see nothing changes with the sound, of course. There's nothing changed with the sound, but the display has changed. And let me hope that I've got this the right way around. If I remember correctly, uh, the top part of the waveform is the mid, and the bottom part is the side. So let's see what happens if we do exactly what I just did um, with the mid area at the top. So we'll go to the envelope. We'll use my little duck envelope and apply that. And then we'll play and let's see what happens. So you could hear quite clearly there that yes, I did get it. <laughs> I did get it the right way around. Um, the mid is at the top and the left and right or the side is at the bottom. It isn't the left and right, it's the side. So let's do something else. Let's go and, you know, let's say, okay, we want to increase the level of the guitars which are panned left and right. Again, we'll go to envelope and what I do here is just let's I don't know let's just lift it up a little bit it's probably going to sound a bit over the top but just for the sake of a demonstration have a listen to what happens here So you get the idea. Those of you familiar with mid-side editing, you've probably done this a million times per day and you probably have other tools to do it, but it is interesting to know that it can be done uh, within WaveLab. Even for simple tasks like that, where let's say you've received a file um, that you're working on and yeah, you might have felt that the outside areas could do with lifting up a bit. Just applying a little bit of gain to the side channel can uh, help to fix that. Um, but like I said, the whole point here really was not so much to show, you know, oh, you can do this and you can do that uh, to fix your file, but more a case really of that it is available. And all the other processes that we can do can be assigned to the center or uh, to the side or the mid or the left and right individually, not just for the whole. All right, camera's off and we'll go back to... Get rid of that. Of course, don't forget, if we wanted to make that permanent, you saw how we do that earlier on, we just would have selected Make Permanent. Right, so we're gonna bring it back up onto my little voice file here. Um, this is something that, a little bit random, but, you know, okay, so we'll zoom to peak, and we're gonna have a look at the silence generator, uh, which I kind of, touched on last time but well there was one little part of this that I didn't show you so I think there's no harm in quickly showing it now so we'll zoom into the part a little bit and we'll select an area what's going on here we're recording a lot in the middle there which may or may not have background noise but if we go to insert you can see we've got the bleep sensor which we did last time whoops that's very loud here we're yeah. <laughs> but that's not why we're here. So we revert back to where we were. We select that little area again. And this time we'll go to silence generator. So we have the options. And I showed you last time, if you want to use true silence, we can do that. 
And now we have here. We're rec absolute silence. But uh, let's just select that again. And what I didn't show you was that we can use a room tone or ambience, or in fact, if you want to be creative, anything you want. Um, and you can insert that instead of silence. You can also use a little bit of a fade out. So let's actually make that fade out a little bit more obvious. And we'll make the selection a bit longer. And just to quickly show you how this works. So the type of silence, ambient sound, we'll make sure it's really quiet. Let's, yeah, okay. Let's room tone. There we are. Okay, and we're off. So there you can see it's inserted our little room tone file and it's also cross-faded it. Have a listen. Things going on here. We're recording lots of voices. Now, again, that's an example of how it works. It's not really, you know, a finished result, as it were, but you get the idea. So we can insert room tone, we can insert ambience in those silent gaps. And you could take that a step further as well using the you know, separation in Nuendo itself in order to find the silences and then use that to replace it with the room tone. Right, let's move on. So we're into correction now. And this is a separate tab. And I've actually got a file to use to demonstrate correction. So once again, we'll just remove it from there and remove extension. And I've got this little flute file here, which uh, Philippe sent over. So let's just zoom in on that. Again, doesn't really matter, but have a quick listen before we add the arrow process. And let's add the arrow process because you can still hear it exactly the same. Okay. So there's our little file. We'll loop that a few times and let me see if you can hear what's going on. So if you can hear... So you can hear there's quite a nasty little click there in that. And actually, you can't see it. This is the odd thing. It's, it's not visible at all. Even if we kind of zoom in using the peaks, there's really no way to see that, which is quite odd. Incidentally, if we go to the spectrograph, you probably can see it. Yeah, there you can, you can see that there's something a little bit amiss there. Let's just see if I'm right. That, that is the click that we're looking at. But let's not worry about that for now. So once again, last time. And just in case you can't hear that, maybe put headphones on or something, because um, it might not be coming across perfectly over on, on the YouTube. But there is quite a nasty click on the left-hand channel. Right. So let's have a look at trying to get rid of that. Um, so what we're going to do first is try to see if WaveLab can actually detect the error. Um, we've got some presets here, which we can edit, and it will report crackles, clicks, pops, and clipping. Minimum audio level, the sensitivity. I've got my own little kind of preset here. So if we set that up, you don't have to. We can just do it without setting anything up, and we can just go detect all errors. And you can see here that WaveLab has now picked up something there. In fact, if we zoom in, you can see that it's actually set a couple of little markers for us. But we don't have to zoom in because what we can do is if we go to Find Next Error, you can see it zooms in on the entire thing. It's even selected that actual left-hand channel and not the right one. Yeah, so I'm going to just do that again because I just want to show you how simple it is. So we'll remove 
the extension. So everything is back to normal. We're going to add the extension again. And we're going to just hit detect all errors. Oh, actually, I'm going to select my little preset. I'm going to go detect all errors. And then we're going to go find next error. And there you can see it clear as a bell, which is super neat. And of course, the, <laughs> the extra neat thing is that WaveLab can now magically fix that. So if we select one of the fixing options here, which would be smooth pencil line, short resynthesis, or in painting. Um, in painting may work better for complex waveforms. It depends on your source material. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use short resynthesis. And we are going to just simply click correct error. And you can actually see that WaveLab smoothed that out and got rid of the click. And don't just take my word for it. Let's have a listen. Pretty neat. Um, and if you want to check that with headphones, I'll play it a couple more times. Uh, there isn't even any glitching there. It's super, super smooth. There's, you know, I was wondering if there might be where the click was, if there might be, you know, some glitches or something. But nope, I can't hear a thing here on the headphones. Pretty smooth. So yeah, that's the basics of correction. The only thing would be you could try some of the other algorithms. So maybe we can just go back and we'll try in painting and we'll do correct error. And you can see, I think if you look there, you can see that that curve is not quite so smooth. Let's undo that. And we'll try smooth pencil line. And that's actually changed, although we probably can't detect it with our ears. Let's have a listen. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, there's a tiny, tiny little low pitched bump there. So let's go back. Let's do in painting again and have a listen. Yeah, that one's pretty indistinguishable. But if we use short resynthesis and do correct, as I said, to my ears, I can't hear any artifacts there at all. Super neat. Moving on then. So let's um, once again remove that from there, just in case I ever need to demo that again. I don't want to make it permanent because otherwise uh, the, the click will have gone and you know there'll be no way to kind of use that as a demo. So I'm going to go back over to our music file for this one. Um, there it is. Okay. So once again, bringing up Wave La Barra. And there's the music. So what I want to do is have a quick look at the spectrum editing. And again, this is something that you could probably dedicate an entire video to. Uh, there's lots of useful features for selecting various areas. If you know spectral layers, you'll know that spectral layers has this kind of editing, but in a very, very advanced way. You can, you know, select, let's say we want to select an area here and we'll go to solo selection and have a listen to that. So for instance, like the click that we had in the uh, flute, you could see that earlier on, we could have maybe just selected the click and then deleted it or, you know, lowered the level of it. Uh, which we can do like that. We've got the solo selected, so let's mute the selection. Actually, let's play regular. Yeah, I'll uh, we'll take the loop off, do that again. So, uh, you know, again, not going to go into fine detail of how to use um, spectral editing, but 
There are a couple of neat features, uh, which I don't know if you'll have seen before. So let's, let's just clear that selection. And we'll make, you know, another, another little random selection. I don't know, something like this. You can see that's selected now. If I just play that normally. If I solo the selection, you're going to hear what I've selected. And if I mute the selection, you're going to hear everything but what I've selected. So pretty neat. There's a lot of powerful things you can do on there with the selection tools itself. There's ways of magically, you know, selecting certain frequencies and other things. And one of the nice things that um, I thought was quite amusing that would be good to show on, uh, on the stream uh, is the text tool. And we're going to make a rectangle selection, something like this. All right, so we've made a selection. It's quite a hefty one, actually. Uh, that's covering quite a lot of area. But again, for the sake of a video, rather than, you know. And we're going to go to the text tool. And let's type something in. Super mega large. And what we've got now is a selection that is based on the text that I typed. And what we can do now is we can apply, let's say, change level. So this is going to be extreme, OK? You, just to make it clear, in case anybody's watching this later or whatever, we're showing extreme examples here, um, you know, for the benefit of, of YouTube. It's not, not going to be subtle. So now, what happens if we play that? That's what you're hearing. There's the rigor. So the idea there is, OK, this, like I said, is ridiculously extreme. You can hear it's affecting the file in a, quite a ridiculous way. But imagine if we did it, let's do a, a slightly smaller one, and then we'll go to our text tool again, and we'll put it in there. And then we'll do that and remove the selection. And you can see, if you look carefully, you can see that text there, right? And that is actually, yeah, that's, that's still audible. OK, it is still audible. There would be a way of placing that somewhere. Maybe it would be. Maybe it would be on the intro, um, where there isn't a lot of music or a bottom end, or on the breakdown, where there's no bass, so you could actually... But basically what you're doing there is you can watermark your file um, so that if you ever bring it up into a spectral editor later on, it's got that text written into the audio of the file, which is extremely clever. Like I said, it would take a little bit of work, I think, to get it so that it was completely unaudible. Sorry, I'm getting tangled up here. Um, but an interesting thing to look at, I thought. All right, so we've got one more little thing. We're going to move into uh, Dolby Atmos, as promised. And this is literally going to take two minutes. I'm going to close this project down now uh, without saving. And let's just load up one of my uh, Atmos projects. There it is, open. And all I wanted to do was basically show you that. Uh, okay, you can let's have a look at the entire project, and we'll zoom in again. It really doesn't matter. You've heard this project before, and this is um, this is an Atmos project. We've got the renderer, and so on. So we can go. And select one of those events, go to Extensions, WaveLab ARA, and bring up WaveLab once again.
and work on those individual stems in the Dolby Atmos project, just like any other project. Which is super cool. I mean, obviously, I suppose, why wouldn't you be able to do that? Because the audio within an Atmos project is basically just a normal audio. So let's just finish off. So up to the menu, project, ADM authoring. And here is our ADM authoring panel. I've got lots of videos about Dolby Atmos, so no need to show you all the details of that. We've got the down mix set 7.14, and I'm going to export the ADM file. So we'll find my desktop. I've already done this, but we'll do it again. And we'll call it Atmos Music Mix. Save. And this is the Dolby Atmos ADM file being exported. Take a couple of seconds. A lot of information there, all right? So that's done. We can now close down Uendo completely. I'm going to open WaveLab. Let's quit Uendo. I'm going to find my Atmos music mix that we've just exported, and I'm literally just going to drag it onto here into WaveLab, and there you can see <laughs> the whole bunch of Atmos objects ready to be edited and do whatever you would like with. I'm not going to try and play them here. I'm not going to try and do stuff, but you can see that all the usual features we were talking about, if you look carefully, there's all the transients and so on and so forth, um, and you can really go into some fine detail with that. But like I said, I'm not going to do it now. This video is not about Atmos, it was just to show you how things can work. Uh, thanks for being with us, thanks for your help, Terry. And um, not sure what we're doing yet next month, but we'll see. And don't forget, if there's any questions, if you've got anything at all that you feel I've skipped over, I took too long, I took too short, whatever, just let me know and we'll answer it either in the comments or even uh, over on the Discord, it's up to you. But thanks once again for being with us. See you again soon. Have a great day. Cheers.